I live in the greatest country in the world. I am a citizen of the United States of America. People from all around the world come to my country to make their dreams come true, to make their dreams a reality. Our founding fathers penned these words in the Constitution that we form a more perfect union. But how many of you know that for every perfection, there's imperfection? I remember as a child, my mom would buy me clothes with the label that read slightly imperfect. Maybe the sleeves were the same length or the buttonholes and the buttons didn't quite match up, just slightly imperfect. I also remember the day that I learned that my family had dysfunction or imperfection. I loved our family gatherings. They were just one big family utopia until the day that drunk Uncle Junior showed up and shut the whole family gathering down. But here's the caveat about drunk Uncle Junior. He's the most loving family member when he's sober. And just like drunk Uncle Junior does not make me love my family any less, the imperfection of my country does not make me love my country any less. Now I know you're wondering, what is the imperfection of her country? The country that I love, the country that I live in. I don't even want to live anywhere else. I love the USA. But here's the imperfection. It is the unwarranted killing of black men. It's what we do. It's who we are. This country has been killing black men unjustly since its inception. It is woven into the tapestry of our fabric. It's what we do. It's who we are. I remember the day I learned of the killing of a 17-year-old young man walking home from the store wearing a hoodie with Skittles in his pocket. He was killed because he did not look like what someone thought he should to be in that neighborhood. I remember that day because I, it felt like I had been hit by an 18-wheeler Mack truck. I had pain in my stomach. I had pain in my back. I had pain in my heart. I had pain in my head because I could not believe this 17-year-old boy had lost his life wearing a hoodie with Skittles in his pocket. We in this country tend to dishonor, discredit, devalue, dehumanize, and even sometimes demonize those persons that don't look like us. We marginalize them. We put them over here. I don't know them. They don't look like me. I don't understand them. I'll get to know them later. I don't want to know who they are. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt marginalized, devalued, or discredited? Can I talk to my sisters here today? Sisters, you, you know that boss, sisters, you have, that male boss that always wants to thank you for a job well done with a hug. And that hug always lasts about five seconds too long. And it feels more like meet me for dinner than thank you very much. And you'd be like, back up now, player, wait, player. Wait, wait, wait now, wait, wait, wait a minute. You've been there, sisters. Or maybe you brothers, brothers, can I talk to you? You love your blue collar job, but all the other men in your family got white collar jobs. And they talk, they talk around you at the Christmas dinner table about their expense accounts and their company cars and their corner offices. But you love your job. Have you ever felt that way? Well, you've been there. That's the way I feel 
every time I hear of the killing of another black man. I wonder if they know they're killing the men that I call kings. They're killing my kings. They're killing the men that are supposed to protect and maintain me. They're killing the men that are supposed to watch out for my community. Do they know that? That they're killing the men that I call kings, my kings. I'm an educator by trade, and I'm a good teacher, good professor. I work on a college campus, and the rumor is, and it, it might be true, that males do better in Dr. Owen's class than females, maybe. And then they, between me and you, they say dark-skinned males do better. I like dark-skinned men, but that's not true. That's not true. I grade everybody according to their abilities. <laughs> I'm an educator. And when it came time for me to do my research for my dissertation, I chose to research black men on college campuses. I ran the numbers. I did the research. You know what I found to be true? And the numbers prove this, that young black men on college campuses, and more specifically, your historically black colleges, our leaders, they are your student government, associ student government association presidents, your class presidents, your sports team captains, your honor society presidents, they're leaders. They're running things on their campuses. And these same young men who are leaders on their campus graduate and become men who do great things in their communities when they are allowed to live. You could probably tell I love black men. I'm an advocate. Love them, love them, love them, and love them. Abraham Lincoln, in his inaugural address at the cusp of the Civil War, he was facing a divided nation it was us against them, you against me. He said these words to his country, allow your better angels to emerge. I make that same request of you today. Allow your better angels to emerge. Can you look past what I look like and see my soul? Can you make the effort to get to know someone that does not look like you? Yes, I know it's hard and it takes effort because like attracts like. And we're comfortable with those people that we look like or that we know. I know them, I don't know them. But here it is, I, it is our diversity that makes us strong. And how much are you missing out of because you won't get to know who I am and what I bring to the table? Allowing your better angels takes work and effort, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Can you see the best in me? Because when you see the best in me, it allows me to see the best in you. Now, 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 I am not naive. And I know that, you know, sometimes Bad people do bad things. And I don't condone bad behavior. I don't want, I'm, I'm not asking you to do that. What I, what I will say is that we can fix bad behavior. What we cannot fix is to kill life. We have the tools to fix bad behavior. We cannot fix a killed life. Better angels emerging. Better angels emerging. There was a song I remember when I was a little girl that said, what the world needs now, you know it, it's love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's much too little of. And that's what I think Abraham Lincoln meant when he said, allow your better angels to emerge. Can you lead with love? 
Can you see me through love's eyes? Can you embrace my difference, not be afraid of it? Because again, it's our diversity that makes us strong. And because we have this imperfection in our nation, there is room for growth. Just like my drunk Uncle Junior that I love so much. My family is better because of it. And I believe that my nation that I love so much can be better if we allow our better angels to emerge. That's what I believe President Lincoln was saying to us. Lead with love. Lead with love. And then don't, 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 don't judge a whole group of people by the actions of one, two, or three. Like I said before, I don't condone bad behavior. We can fix bad behavior. We can't fix the kill life. Lead with love. Let love guide your actions. Embrace diversity. And when you do that, when you lead with love, I believe that we will live out the words of forming a more perfect union. Thank you.